We're gonna go into deep detail about broad jump based training and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from Garagestrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in taking those weight room gains and transferring it over to the field, you wanna learn how you can get stronger, be more explosive and become a better athlete, make sure that you like, you subscribe and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. So when we're talking about the broad jump, okay, we've gotta think about what is the broad jump? In the simplest terms, what is it? And all it is is if I'm standing at point A can I jump to point B as far as possible and then let's measure it. So we wanna see in a very simple facet, how explosive am I over a distance, over a horizontal distance? And so what's gonna happen is we wanna train multiple different aspects and we want to have a very deep counter movement. So if we're standing vertically, we're gonna have a very deep counter movement where your entire torso will start to get all the way in line with your hips. And what this is gonna show us is it's going to lead to quite a bit of hip and hamstring recruitment. So we need to train this aspect, but more importantly, we have to be mobile in our lower back. We have to be mobile in our hips. We have to be able to recruit our posterior chain very, very effectively. And the reason why our torso will get so horizontal is because we need horizontal projection. That forward lean from the chest is going to help us get out for that monster jump. What else is needed? We need to have a really strong coordination between our massive arm swings, our chest coming forward, and then as our arms come forward, our chest coming out, our chest coming out, and while we're in the air, we wanna see a very high heel recovery. We want that high heel recovery so that our feet can get forward, and that's gonna help us get a little bit further when we're grounding. If we have a lower heel recovery, we're not gonna be able to outreach our feet as far, and we might lose four, five, six inches. So that can go a long way as far as broad jump training tests are concerned. Now, in the sport of football, how does this actually transfer? One, it's gonna show us how quickly can this athlete recruit. If they have a seven foot broad jump, they're not gonna be super explosive. They're not gonna have a good first step. They're not gonna be able to have a very high jump, right? They're not gonna be able to block a pass or or react quickly. That's the other facet here is that with a broad jump, we're going to see how quickly can they react, how well do they drop, drive forward, how well can they project their body forward. If they have to lay out for a catch, do they, can they do that? If they have to lay out to make a tackle, can they do that? Can they use their body horizontally? So it's also gonna show us, typically those athletes that have a very long broad jump are going to be really good at horizontal projection, which means they're probably gonna run fast. So transfer over to the field is it's gonna show us that first step. It's gonna show us how quickly are they out of the gates? How quickly are they out of the blocks? Are they able to take that rapid rate of coordination and then use that to manipulate their body? And that's where it transfers really well to the field is that it's gonna show us if somebody can hit really, really well. If I see a running back coming into the hole and I just drop slightly and then make that change as a defensive tackle to make the hit. If I can make that hit early, it's because I have a very rapid rate of coordination and that's going to actually arise through the broad jump test. So now we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna show you exactly how to execute a broad jump training session as well as possible. So the biggest thing we gotta focus on when we're doing the, the broad jump is we've gotta think about the counter movement first. If we establish a very strong counter movement and we're trained properly where we're strong enough to handle the elastic energy that is created from that counter movement, we can then utilize that to project ourselves horizontally. So some of the big key factors is, I always recommend if you are doing Olympic lifts or you do you know, back squats, simple things like this, or if you, ju you just do a hurdle hop or a box jump, whatever, that broad jump position should be the same position as where you're gonna be pu your pulling stance for a clean, for a snatch, for a back squat, for a box jump, for a hurdle hop. The biggest difference here between a vertical jump and a broad is that in the broad jump, the counter movement is we're gonna be here, we're gonna sweep those arms back and we're gonna have our hips here and our head is gonna be just almost exactly in line with our hips. Uh, and that's gonna help us really recruit from that posterior chain and the hamstrings to help with the hip extension coming off the line. So we wanna sit here, get those wide sweeping arms here, and then as we project forward, you know, 42 to 45 degrees, 
The big key factor that a lot of guys screw up is that when they're in the air, they keep their heels low, okay? So as you extend off the line and you elevate forward, we wanna see a high heel recovery and then as those knees come through, our hands will start to come backwards and when we land, we're gonna be coming forward because of what we're doing with our upper body in the air. So the big key factors is a good counter movement to where we're almost exactly in line with our hips, with our upper body. We sweep forward aggressively, sweep forward aggressively with the upper body. And then while we're in the air, we want a high heel recovery, that high heel recovery and reach forward on that flat foot landing. And that's gonna help us keep moving everything forward to stick that landing. So we got Cooper Lutz, who's a running back at Syracuse. Jan Johnson, who just signed a futures contract with the Tennessee Titans and then three-time national champ and two-time Pan Am senior team member, Jacob Horst. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens because Jan weighs a little bit over 240 as a linebacker. Cooper's a little bit lighter, obviously around 200 pounds, a little bit heavier than that possibly. And then Jake walks around at about 70 kilos or 155 pounds, 154 pounds. So what's gonna be fun to see is Jan's got pretty good strength, but he's a little bit heavier. Cooper's extremely athletic, extremely wired, but isn't really trained on the technique aspects of these, of these drills, especially the broad. And then with Jake, his springs, his bunnies are just off the charts. He can snatch over 140 kilos. He's cleaned 170 kilos at a body weight of 70 kilos. So he has a very, very high ceiling when it comes to actually having that jump capability. So it's gonna be fun to see how they move, how they handle the technique, and then obviously how far they can go. Great job, Jan. Yeah. Higher heel. Think use those, use the aggressive upper body, and then that higher heel. Same, same with you, Koopy. Like think, think when you're in the air here, the knees, the heel comes higher, and that's gonna help that knees, and then you're gonna reach a little bit more. That was okay. That's when you'll start to come back and your chest comes forward. That was a good jump, still a little low with the heels, but that jump's good. That actually was a little better though. That's pretty good. Oh, Cooper. <laughs> That's not bad. Ooh, that's not bad. Technique was solid. Super aggressive arms here, aggressive arms, aggressive heels, and then aggressive arms back. So it's like arms, heel, high heel, arms back through. Heels were a little low, but the arm was good. <laughs> yeah, you're too low. That's not bad. Oh! That was pretty big. Counter movement was weak too.